Welcome back to French Action and welcome if you are new to this channel. You are preparing for a French exam and you need to write an essay in French? Well, this video is for you. So if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please consider doing so. I have written an essay just for you and you'll find it right at the end of the video. Vous êtes prêts? C'est parti. So we're going to start with the structure of the essay. But before that, why do you need to write an essay for your French exam? Well, we want to see that you can organize your ideas in a logical way and effectively. And what I mean by effectively, I mean that you're using a good level of French with good expressions and good connectors. So, I have come up with par. Par means présenter la question, analyser la question, répondre à la question. So, that's basically what you will have to do. First of all, you will need to introduce the question and you have to assume that the examiners don't know the questions. So you have to present it to them, introduce it, and you're going to do that in an introduction. Then you will need to analyze the question and discuss, and that's what is called discussion. discussion. You will have to talk about different things, but also illustrate your ideas with examples. You can't just say something and there's nothing to back it up. And finally, you will answer. You will be responding to the question. And that you will do it in a conclusion. So don't forget par, présenter la question, analyser la question, répondre à la question. So the first part of your essay will be the introduction. What exactly are you going to put in your introduction? Of course, introductions will vary depending on the question. But you need to identify the key words, les mots clés, and maybe define them depending again on the question. And you'll need to introduce the question and say what you're going to talk about because you have a plan. The second part, as you know, is the discussion. So you're going to try to follow the plan that you would have mentioned in your introduction. Then you're going to find arguments. You're going to uh, give your opinion and of course, illustrate all this with examples. Finally, you will write your conclusion and you may have to recap on all the things you have talked about and of course respond to the question. I have written an essay and I'm going to share my introduction and what I'm going to ask you to do is to read the introduction with me and tell me what the question is based on my introduction. If you can't manage, it means that my introduction is not good. Let's read together. Le commerce est une vieille activité qui a récemment pris une forme toute particulière grâce à Internet. Pourquoi ne pas faire ses achats en ligne dans le confort de chez soi? Le e-commerce s'est développé et plus récemment. Les ventes en ligne se seraient multipliées pendant la pandémie de la COVID-19. Il serait donc judicieux d'examiner les avantages et les inconvénients d'un tel commerce dans notre société. 
This is the question. Discuter les avantages et les inconvénients du e-commerce. And this in 250, between 250 and 300 words. Did you get that through my introduction? So basically, I have said what I was going to talk about. I'm going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of the e-commerce, of e-commerce, okay? So what I would advise you to do is to have one part for advantages and another for disadvantages. Don't put them together. And I would advise you, advise you to write a, a, at least three examples, minimum two, but I would say three examples is good. And then you conclude. So this is the structure of this particular essay. And I do say particular because not all essays are going to have advantages and disadvantages. Les avantages, advantages. So now let's read together the first part of my discussion. Le côté pratique du e-commerce ne peut pas être sous-estimé. Faire ses achats en ligne sans avoir à se déplacer, juste en utilisant un ordinateur, est un gain de temps considérable, surtout pour les familles avec enfants. Ainsi, ces dernières peuvent passer plus de temps à pratiquer des activités qui leur sont bénéfiques. En outre, les sites offrent des produits de toute gamme. On a facilement l'embarras du choix et en comparant les prix, on finit par économiser. Now the disadvantages. Let's read together. Néanmoins, le e-commerce n'est pas accessible à tous. Il faut avoir un ordinateur ou un portable, être connecté sur Internet et posséder une carte bancaire utilisable en ligne, ce qui n'est malheureusement pas le cas pour de nombreuses personnes. Cela voudrait-il dire que ceux qui ont les moyens se servent du e-commerce alors que les autres paient le prix fort dans les magasins de leur ville? Aussi, il faut noter qu'acheter en ligne reste un moyen dangereux à cause des cyberattaques. Par conséquent, on doit rester vigilant. Finalement, le e-commerce représente une véritable concurrence au marché local. Now the disadvantages. Let's read together. En conclusion, selon moi, les avantages l'emportent sur les inconvénients et nous sommes maintenant trop impliqués dans un tel commerce pour faire maintenant marche arrière. Les niveaux de sécurité devront s'amplifier pour faire face aux cyberattaques et il devrait y avoir des systèmes qui permettent aux personnes défavorisées de profiter du e-commerce. So here I'm showing you the number of words because I wanted to write much more, but I was limited, remember, to between 250 and 300 words. So the introduction came up to 68 words, part one, 78 words, part two, 98 words, Conclusion, 52 words, which gives us a total of 296 words. So as you can see, I couldn't put anything else. Here are my tips, mes astuces. So before you get into it, you need to write down your ideas straight away before you forget them. And that's what I call the preparation phase. 
So very quickly, you go through the advantages. So you can see what I've written here. Gain de temps, activité en famille. So uh, if you use e-commerce, you're not going to waste a lot of time. It's totally the opposite. So you're going to gain time and therefore you will be able to uh, get involved in activities with the family. And also e-commerce provides us with a variety of products, a variety of, of prices as well. So if you want to use the products which are cheap, you can economize, which means save money. Once you have your three examples of advantages, straight away, you go right into the disadvantages. So I put here three main ideas. The first one, lack of access to internet. So if you don't have a computer, if you don't have internet, and you, if you don't have a bank account or a, a card you, which you can use online, you cannot use uh, online shopping. That's, that's it. However, you can talk about the fact that online shopping is, can be dangerous because of cyber attacks. So you can talk about that. And in my essay, I talked about the fact that it's a competition to uh, the local shops. I wanted to say a little bit more about that, but I didn't have enough. <laughs> I didn't, I wrote too much. So I, I as you can see, I only had uh, four words left. So I decided not to expand on that, but at least I have used my idea. Once you've finished the two parts of your discussion, you can then think of your conclusion. So this is what I said for advantages. This is what I want to say about the advantages. So what, what is the conclusion? Well, for me, I said that there were more advantages than disadvantages. Okay, that's how I ended my uh, essay. So what is yours? And when you have done all this, you can think of the introduction. I know it's a bit weird because the introduction is the very first part you're going to be writing. However, I think that it's, it's, it's not as difficult as the other parts. So why not do it at the end? And uh, the, in your introduction, I advise you to put a sentence to introduce the question and not just go straight into the essay question. My second tip is really to write as much vocabulary as possible on the topic. So we're talking about e-commerce. So any vocabulary which you have in your head right then at the time, just write it down to make sure that you don't forget it. Because you know, during exams, sometimes we get blanks. So you do that. And then you can also think of connectors. I have selected three connectors here because these are the ones I have used in the essay. Thus, furthermore, and also. So for thus is ainsi. Furthermore, en outre, and also aussi. Yes, you can use aussi at the beginning of a sentence. Other connectors that I used in the essay are consequently, finally, and in conclusion. So par conséquent, for consequently, finalement, for finally, et en conclusion, or you could say pour conclure. And of course, all these words are followed by a comma. So of course, it's not just those connectors, but I'm just using the ones which are in my essays, but there's a long list of connectors. Now I'm going to share with you the expressions which I have used in the essay. The first one is on a facilement l'embarras du choix, which means we are spoiled for choice. Nice expression to remember. Selon moi, according to me, 
So when you want to give your opinion, il faut noter que, it's worth noting that, I know that il faut noter, uh, it gives you the impression that we must note, but I think in English we would translate it as, it's worth noting that. Les avantages l'emportent sur les inconvénients. Advantages, the advantages outweigh the disadvantages. So that's what I used in my essay. A quick recap. Read the question. Of course, you have to read the question, but I'm not talking really about reading the questions. It's reading the question so that you understand it. Make sure that you understand the keyword, underline them. Make sure that you have another uh, color to highlight those keywords. And you need to remember that you might have to uh, define them depending on the type of essay you're going to have. Prepare your plan. You know that it has to be logical. Okay, so prepare your parts, your introdu introduction, uh, the different parts of the discussion, okay? Prepare that quickly, uh, informally. And at the same time, write down the vocabulary which you think you will need. The vocabulary will be related to the topic of the, the, the question, okay? So make sure you have that. And then start writing some connectors which come to your mind even some expressions which might be relevant to the particular topic you're going to uh, discuss. So write them before you forget. Don't forget to count the words, very important, count the words. So if you have, I mean, if you have 301 words for 300, it's fine. But remember, you shouldn't really go over 300. Okay? And read over what you have written. You, have, you, you can't submit an essay full of mistakes. Okay? And some of the mistakes, you know them already. You tend to miss out the, the S of the plural and probably don't put the right conjugation and so on. So go through all this to ensure that there are fewer mistakes as possible. Of course, you will make mistakes, but it's not so much about making mistakes. It's the type of mistakes I'm talking about, okay? There are some mistakes which for B1, B2, you should no longer make, okay? Good luck with your next, uh, essay and I'm sure that this is going to help you uh, if you didn't have any idea as to how to write an essay. Please let me know in the comment below if it has been useful. Hey guys, we've come to the end of this video and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please like it, share it, and share it with those who really need help with this topic, which is essay writing in French. And of course, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so. And for those who have, a big merci. If you want to see the whole essay, then it's right after the music. Au revoir!